I am new to calisthenics, and this year I decided to put some goals in place for myself. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of my goals, I'm going to show you my starting point, and I'm going to go over what I'm currently doing for my training. My hope is that maybe I can give you some motivation or some inspiration if you are in a similar place to me. So first up is planche, and this is a skill that I'm basically starting at zero. I can't really even hold a tuck planche. And for that reason, I think that this year it's going to be a bit unreasonable for me to get a full planche. So my goal is just to be able to get a straddle planche with a bit of a pike. And honestly, I'm a bit hesitant about this goal. Even the guys who are big into calisthenics are super jacked. They talk about how they took five plus years to get their planche or, you know, this is how I got my planche back. So it is a very hard skill. And on top of that, body proportions make a huge difference to how difficult the move can be. So if you're very tall or if you're bottom heavy, these factors can make the move harder to attain. But even with those limitations, I think it's still worth a try. Next up is a press to handstand and this is something I'm a bit more optimistic for and really excited about because it's something I've wanted for a really long time. I already have a pretty okay handstand and I think I'm actually pretty close to a press to handstand already so I think this one is totally attainable for me. And I also really wanted to include this because I think it's a great skill to train alongside of planche because there's a lot of carryover in the training. And last up, I have the L-sit or V-sit. And this is something that I never really tried or trained for before, but I happen to already be able to hold an L-sit. I think this is primarily because I already have some strength and my body proportions just allow for it to be easier for me. I have a relatively shorter torso and relatively longer arms in comparison. So I don't really have to compress too much to be able to hold myself in an L-sit, whereas somebody else might have to compress more. And so I'm also going to be training for the V-sit, which requires more compression and more strength. And again, there is some carryover between the training for this, as well as my other two goals. And now let's talk about what I'm doing for my training to work towards these goals. And I want to start off by saying that this is just my routine for now, and things will probably change as I progress. This is just to give you some ideas of where you can start if you're anything like me. First off, I am still weight training, and I aim for this three times a week, or optimally four times if I'm not doing any other activities. Except I've done something that most weightlifters or most gym goers will disagree with. Instead of training the traditional push-pull leg split, I've completely dropped the leg exercises and instead I'm doing a push-pull core routine. And I have my reasons for this but I won't be going over that in this video. And if you want to see exactly what I'm doing for my weight training, drop a comment below and I might make a full video on that. Next, I worked my skills training into my calendar. And because I'm training three skills simultaneously and I wanted to hit each skill at least twice a week, I've ended up doing my skill training at least six days a week. But this training is only about 20 to 30 minutes because I do fatigue fairly quickly because I am still quite beginner at this. And now moving into the specific exercises that I'm using to train my planche. I first start with a lot of wrist warm-up and wrist flexibility training before moving into other skills. The first real drill that I do is planche leans, working to lean as far forward as I can in the planche position while keeping my elbow straight and my shoulders protracted. Next, I do the same drill but this time on the parallel bars. Next, I'm doing something very similar with a slight difference. This time, once I lean forward, I'm trying to bring as much weight off of my toes as possible. And I'll do this by lifting one leg at a time. And as a quick note, I usually do this inside where I have a little bit more space to lengthen out. And I also don't have to wear thermal leggings, two sweatshirts and two pairs of socks. Next, I'm gonna work on some tuck planche attempts. And I can't hold this for all too long, so I'll attempt this three or four times, rest, and repeat. If I have the energy for it, I'll also attempt some swings from like a tuck L-sit through to a tuck planche.
Next, I do this modified sort of foot drag, starting in this sort of piked position, and then dragging my hips up and holding it at the top for as long as I can. And again, I fatigue fairly fast, so I'll attempt this three or four times, rest and repeat. Next, moving on to my press to handstand routine. And this training is a little bit more haphazard. I go more off of how I'm feeling to determine how many sets, reps, or how long I'm training this. After some basic mobility and warm up, I'll move into the pancake stretch. And for this, I use a small weight on my back, lean forward, and press myself back up. I'm trying to go as far down as I can here while keeping my back flat. I'm also focusing on starting the movement by rotating my hips rather than just leaning forward. I really want to focus on that hip movement and hip rotation. After that, I'll move on to some jump to handstands, just practicing on my handstand holds and getting balanced there. Once these start to feel good and I feel like I'm holding for a decent length of time, I'll move on to my next drill, which is a press to handstand negative. So I'm trying to slow the movement down as much as I can in the negative. And for these, I'm doing what I refer to as a five by five. So I'm doing five sets of five. And if I really mess up and just fall immediately, I won't count that as one. And the last thing that I'm doing for my press to handstand training right now is these sort of rocks into press to handstand. And for this, I'll just do as many as I can rest and repeat, and then continue on until my attempts start to feel or look worse. And next on to my L-sit or V-sit training. Similar to my handstands, I'll start with some mobility and flexibility training, focusing specifically on the hamstrings. Next, I'll do some leg raises on the ground, keeping my hips on the ground while raising my heels. Some days I'll also do this against the wall to prevent any sort of rocking backwards motion. And I'm trying to hold at the top for at least a second or two before coming back down. Then I'll move on to the parallel bars again, starting with some L-sits and some tuck to L-sit. Once I've done a couple sets of this, I'll move on to trying to open my chest in an L-sit. Then if I have the energy, once I open my chest, I'll also try to bring my knees to my chest. And again, I'll repeat this for as many reps as I can, rest and repeat, usually for about three or four sets. Then I'll move off the bars and sort of cool down with some shoulder mobility and flexibility training. And I keep this at the end because I'm really nowhere close to a V-sit yet, so it's not really necessary for me to warm up with this, in my opinion. I'll train some reverse bridges and some V-sits against the wall for this training. And so that is it for my training and goals this year. Again, my routine will probably change as I progress and I might give some updates maybe in six months or so. If you found this video helpful and you're still watching, please like and subscribe, it really does help. And please let me know in the comments what you're currently working on because I would love to know. Oh my gosh, oh what are you doing? Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs>